Greetings, mother factors, and welcome to Andrew One Facts. My name is not Jeff, to quote a years old meme now, but rather is Sam. And I'm here today to talk to you about a state that's scenic and beautiful and apparently full of people who can't not be in the news because some crazy headlines come from there. Yes, that's right, Rhode Island. No, wait, no, sorry, Florida. Yes, Florida. But 75% of America's what comes from Florida? Why are there so many sinkholes? Why was this piece of stock footage ever even filmed? Who would need this specific situation? Chris, just find what you like. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so come with me on a trip to Miami and the Keys and, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Damn, that doesn't rhyme. Maybe I'm not the next Vanilla Ice after all. As we go through 101 facts about Florida. Number one. Flo Rida, also known as Tramar LaSalle Dillard, is a 41-year-old rapper from Carroll City, best known for his hit La- Oh, sorry, no, it's not that Flo Rida. We're talking about the third most populous, 22nd most extensive, and 8th most densely populated of the 50 states of the USA. Number 2. Florida graduated to its statehood on March the 3rd, 1845, the 27th state to do so. It's made up of 67 counties and is bordered by Georgia and Alabama. Its state's capital is a little place called Tallahassee. Number 3. Now Florida is what we in the 101 trade called a peninsula. It's almost completely surrounded by water. After all, the east and west and south of Florida are surrounded by the Gulf of Mexico and the North Atlantic Ocean, meaning it must be Aquaman's favourite state. Number 4. In fact, whenever you're in Florida, you're never more than 60 miles away from the ocean. Again, decent for Aquaman and, uh, uh who else lives in the sea? Number 5. A Spanish explorer named Juan Ponce de Leon gave Florida its name. When he first saw it on the 2nd of April 1513, he named it La Florida after the Spanish Feast of Flowers holiday known there as Pascua Florida. Number 6. The ownership of Florida has been passed around like a big bag of crisps. It was part of Great Britain and Spain before it became part of the USA. In fact, it was held by the Spanish for 280 years, which is longer than the US has even been around. Number 7. Florida was the main stage and battleground of a conflict known as the Seminole Wars between 1816 and 1858, involving the US military against the Native American group. After this, it then seceded from the Union during the Civil War, becoming a Confederate state, and then embarrassingly joining seven years later again in 1868. Number 8. This right here is Florida's official state flag. Say hello! It was adopted in the year 1900, with a red cross of St Andrew on a white field and Florida State Seal on the centre, which confusingly looks nothing like a seal. Just put the lollipop on my tongue. Where are the flippers? Number 9. The state flag of Florida has been through several different versions since the middle of the 19th century. Before then, though, it had some Spanish regional flags as its own, because, you know, owned by Spain. In 1845, one of its flags even said, Let us alone, which doesn't even make sense. Number 10. It was only during the 20th century that those diagonal red lines were added to the flag, and apparently this was so it didn't look too much like the old surrender flag. Number 11. Do -do 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 it did have the British Union Jack briefly after Florida was under British rule. Well, obviously, for 20 years, in fact, between 1763 and 83, and then the Spanish decided, do you know what, we want it back. So they took it back. Number 12. The flag that can be seen all over the Sunshine State today dates from 1900, when a vote meant that the diagonal red lines were added. The Cross of Burgundy, as it's called, is a reminder of Spanish rule over the state, and it also represents the cross on which St Andrew was crucified. Number 13. The seal of the state of Florida was added to the flag in the 1860s, but you may notice in this old version of the flag that the Seminole woman is wearing a headdress. This was removed in 1970. Number 14. Native Americans called Seminoles, which explains the name of the war earlier on, still live in Florida to this day. Their ancestors are a mix of tribes who came together in the area in the 18th century to avoid the big old fights happening between the Europeans and other tribes. Number 15. In 1982, something frankly absolutely bizarre happened. The Florida Keys seceded from the US and called themselves the Conch Republic. Led by former mayor, then Prime Minister Dennis Wardlow, they then declared war on the United States. It was a long and bloody battle that, oh no, it wasn't that, sorry, it lasted for two minutes and they surrendered and requested a million dollars in foreign aid. Number 16. Florida enjoys two time zones, lucky them. It uses Eastern and Central time. In fact, one county, Gulf County if you really want to know, is the only one to use both of them. Number 17. 
Florida has the longest coastline in the contiguous United States. It has a whopping 825 miles of beaches for you to top up your tan and have a little splash in the ocean. And that's coming from the palest Irish-skinned man on the planet. Number 18. However, if you do fancy a little dip in your bathing suit, you'd better not be singing while you do it. One of the weirdest Floridian laws is that it's illegal to sing in a public place while wearing a swimsuit. I don't know why, just don't do it. Number 19. Speaking of wet things, the Florida Reef is the only living coral barrier reef in the continental United States. What? It is wet, it's underwater. It's also the third largest coral barrier reef system in the world after the Great Barrier Reef and the Belize Barrier Reef, if you can believe that. <laughs> Number 20. Florida as a whole has over 7,700 lakes and 11,000 miles of rivers. In addition to the crazy amount of shoreline too, Florida has become the boating and fishing capital of the world. Number 21. Fort Lauderdale is often compared to Venice and is called the Venice of America because of its crazy canal system. It has 165 miles of waterways and is just hashtag stunning. I get the appeal. Number 22. Ooh. The city of St. Augustine was established by the Spanish in 1565. Wow, they were busy. This was a full 42 years before the English established Jamestown and 55 before Plymouth Rock, which makes it the oldest city that has people still living in it in the whole of the states. Number 23. Speaking of the Spaniards, Tampa. That's a place in Florida, wouldn't you know? Tampa used to be known as Tanpa, or at least according to the memoirs of Hernando de Escalante Fortaneda, a Spanish chap who was a captive of the Native American Calusa tribe. It's number 24. Oh. The Sunshine Skyway Bridge is a cable-stayed beach that's not made of sunshine or in the sky, which I think is case for prosecution, frankly. It's 190 feet above water though and is 4.1 miles long, and you can see a lot of ocean while you drive, so lovely, just don't get distracted. Number 25. The city of Miami gets its name from a Will Smith song. Oh sorry, no it doesn't, it gets its name from one of the native tribes that lived in the region in the 16 and 1700s, the Maya Emi. The Maya Emi people likely lived in the region as early as 1000 BC. Number 26. Miami, as we know it today, was founded by local businesswoman Julia Tuttle, who encouraged a developer to extend the new Florida East Coast Railroad to Miami back in the 1800s. This led the way to the development of modern Miami. This also makes Miami the only major US city to be founded by a woman. So that's what the Spice Girls were thinking about with girl power. Oh. Number 27. Miami Beach has to have top-ups when it comes to sand. Why? Because much like my abs, they're not natural, they're man-made. That said though, perhaps it could have been made a little bit better by said man, as those who live nearby are more vulnerable when it comes to flooding and hurricanes due to a lack of defences. Number 28. Florida is one of the most hurricane-prone states in the entire US, so much so that it has its own hurricane season of June the 1st to November the 30th, which is pretty much half a year of wind-based danger. Hurricane Katrina, for instance, struck in 2005 and caused over $160 billion in damages. Number 29. It's also home to the world's largest collection of Art Deco architecture. Those two things aren't linked, by the way. If you're wondering what I mean by Art Deco, think GTA Vice City, and you've basically got it. Number 30. Approximately 14.5 million people visited Miami in 2014, which is, scientifically, a lot of people. It's the fourth best hotel market in the US after Oahu, San Francisco, and New York. Number 31. Who lives in a building off the coast of Key Largo, 62 feet under the sea? Some scientists do. Okay, they don't live there, but look, the song had to work, okay? This is Aquarius Reef Base, an underwater laboratory. You can get into it too, so you could live there technically, kind of. Number 32. Luckily, Key Largo is also the dive capital of the world, so I guess they wouldn't mind jumping into an underwater building. Should you submerge, you could also see the Molasses Reef, the Carries Fort Reef, the Statue Christ of the Abyss, shipwrecks, U-boat wrecks, and more marine life than you can shake a scuba mask at. Number 33. The land of Florida, like onions, has a lot of layers. Thing is though, those layers are on a foundation of limestone and dolomite, which are porous and can cause sinkholes. It's such a problem that insurance companies get 17 claims of sinkhole damage per day. Number 34. On to Orlando now, no not Bloom, the place. Orlando is home to over 100 lakes somehow, and yet it's LA who have the Lakers. Riddle me that one. This includes Lake Ari- sorry no, Eola, which is just a giant sinkhole. In a way, aren't all lakes just big puddles? Think about that. Number 35. It's also home to an entertainment centre with a building constructed upside down, which sounds like a nightmare. How do you build that? 
The Wonderworks building plays tricks on the visitors' minds by making them think they are seeing things. The centre is billed as an amusement park for the mind because it captivates the imagination. Hashtag not a spawn. Number 36. Speaking of amusement parks, the daddy of them all, Walt Disney World Resort, is in Florida. It's the planet's most visited and biggest recreational resort, established in 1971, and it's basically the same size as San Francisco. Number 37. People love it so much they even want to be buried there, but you can't, sorry. And if you're thinking of trying to get around that by getting done in with ashes, you've got another thing coming. Disneyland has a policy that suspicious piles of dust will be vacuumed up, so... Number 38. Florida is also home to Cape Canaveral, where you can find the Kennedy Space Center. This happens to be the primary spaceport of NASA, where most of their space flights take off from. Number 39. One of these flights just happened to contain Mr. Neil Armstrong and his crew as they became the first men to walk on the moon on July the 16th, 1969. Iconic, baby. Number 40. There's one of those phone area codes that's been in service since 1999 in reference to this in Brevard County, which is 321, referring to the countdown before a launch, not the Ted Rogers TV show of the same name. Ain't that clever though, ain't that clever? Number 41. The world's first scheduled passenger airline service operated between St. Petersburg and Tampa, Florida. The first flight on this route took place on January 1st, 1914. The flight's pilot was Tony Janus, and the first paying passenger was Abram C. File, former mayor of St. Petersburg, and daredevil, apparently. The 34km flight across the bay to Tampa took 23 minutes. The meaning of life. The Atrope Post Office in, well, Atrope, Florida, is the USA's smallest post office. Even though it looks like a doll's house, there's a full-time clerk employed inside. Maybe they're the smallest post clerk in the world. Number 43. The building used to store tools and tomatoes, everybody's favourite combination. It's small because it only serves 300 people, but it has a catchment area of 170 miles. Number 44. The Florida Keys have more bars per capita than any other location in America. Oh, and there's a bar called the Shuna Wharf Bar, where happy hour starts at 7am. 7am? That can't be- how can anything happy start at 7am? Number 45. Key West, isn't he the guy who's running for president? Oh, it's not him. It's an oceanic nightmare waiting to happen, as it's the southernmost point of the entire of the US. Number 46. The Keys are actually made up of over 1,700 islands. That many. Granted, a lot of them are very small and uninhabited, but because there's so many, they're often grouped into the upper keys, middle keys, lower keys, and outlying islands. Number 47. 43 of these islands are connected by 42 bridges, one of which is 7 miles long, so, you know, your car doesn't sink in the ocean. The outer keys are only accessible by boat though, so you best learn your port from your starboard, buddy. Number 48. Located in Delray Beach, Florida, Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens is a commemorative center for Japanese art and culture. This scenic site is the only museum in the US that's dedicated solely to Japan. Number 49. The aforementioned Fort Lauderdale seems like a lovely tolerant place as it's generally considered one of the most LGBTQ plus friendly cities in America. If you need proof, well I've got it buddy, I need to stop calling people buddy, it has the biggest percentage of same sex couples. It's also home to the legendary Southern Comfort Transgender Conference, which takes place every year. Number 50. The Everglades are made up of 1.5 million acres of sawgrass marshes, forests and wetlands, and just so happens to be the largest subtropical wilderness in the US. Number 51. Kissimmee Prairie Preserve State Park, which is a mouthful, can be found right in the middle of Florida and is the only state park that's certified by the International Dark Sky Association, who protect the night skies from light pollution so we can see the stars. Lovely. Number 52. Daytona Beach's City Island Ballpark holds some historical significance as the site of the first integrated professional baseball game. The stadium is now named after Jackie Robinson, the first African-American Major League Baseball player of the modern era. Number 53. If you look at Florida on a map, like we have done several times in this video by now, you can see it's a little dangly bit that looks kind of close to Cuba. It looks swimmable, and it was for 64-year-old Diana Niad, who swam the length without a shark cage. It took just under 53 hours to do so. Number 54. The small town of Pearson in northeast Florida is known as the fern capital of the world. I bet you've always wondered where that is, and now you know. Ferns from farms here are shipped worldwide, although I imagine a lot of them go to Sakgafanakis. Number 55. Speaking of trees, Florida is also home to the world's most dangerous tree, the Manchineel tree. 
All parts of the tree contain strong toxins. Mere contact with its sap can cause blisters on the skin. The tree is also known as the beech apple and little apple of death. Number 56. The senator in Longwood is rumoured to be 3,500 years old. That is until a drag addict climbed inside him and burnt him to the ground. The burner apparently said, I can't believe I burned down a tree that's older than Jesus. Oh sorry, did I not mention the senator is a nickname of a huge tree, which was the fifth oldest in the world? I should have probably led with that. Number 57. The highest point in Florida is Britton Hill, which is a mere 345 feet above sea level, the poor thing. Must be fun to roll down though. Number 58. Florida has more golf courses than any other state, over 1,200 to be specific, and is home to the World Golf Hall of Fame and Museum in St. Augustine. That explains why, when I bought some t-shirts from Florida, there was a hole in one. Number 59. Eglin Air Force Base has a prison within it, which is a minimum security prison known as Club Fed. Why? Because it seems great, and apparently served lobster through inmates and allowed them to play golf. However, sorry, it was shut down in 2006, so... If you commit a crime now, you'll just go to straight up regular jail. Number 60. Florida makes 75% of the USA's oranges, which is mad when you consider that Orange County is in California. Florida also apparently accounts for 40% of the entire world's OJ supply. I wonder if the toothpaste tastes different there. Number 61. Orlando businessman Dr. Philip Phillips, yes that is his real name, did I stutter, owned Minute Maid and sold it for $50 million in 1954. He owned 5,000 acres of citrus in Florida, making the Citrus Hall of Fame, which I'm surprised existed too. Number 62. <laughs> Florida is the largest producer of watermelons in the country. It also produces the most tomatoes, strawberries and sugar. Harry Styles would have a field day. Florida produces fresh market tomatoes on 30,000 to 40,000 acres every year, which is equal to two thirds of US tomatoness. Number 63. As you've seen from the maps, Florida is pretty close to the Caribbean. This gives the state a strong Creole influence on its cuisine, sometimes called Floribian cuisine. That's right, it's not all OJ and oysters. Nintendo 64. Some of these foods include grits, key lime pie, cobblers, and chicharron. Though Florida is also home to the iconic Cuban sandwich and the fried snapper, which is inspired by the Haitian Miami community. Number 65. An average annual commercial harvest of Apalachicola Bay oysters produces enough meat to cover a football field three deep. This makes it the perfect location for the Florida Seafood Festival held each November. Number 66. Have you ever been sipping on a Gatorade and wondering, why is it called this? Where did the name come from? It came from Florida, baby. Well, specifically, the University of Florida as a drink was developed there, and their team is called the Gators. Number 67. The largest tortoise that ever lived, appropriately known as Goliath, lived in Sephna's Life Fellowship Bird Sanctuary for 42 years until 2002. He was 4 foot 5 inches long and 3 foot 4 inches wide. A big shelly boy. Number 68. Let's talk about some more wildlife. We all know Florida is home to some gnarly crocs and alligators, but here you can also find panthers, sea turtles, manatees and dolphins. Oh, and 516 species of bird. Number 69. Florida. Speaking of those gnarly crocs and alligators, did you know that the Everglades National Park is the only place on Earth where they actually peacefully coexist together? Well now you do, don't you? Number 70. The Everglades are teeming with invasive species, including 8 inch long giant snails, boa constrictors, two types of python, and crocodile like reptiles called caimans. Number 71. In 1929, the owner of a Florida Keys fishing lodge, in a pretty Bruce Wayne move, spent $10,000 of his own money to build a 30-foot wooden tower in the hopes of attracting mosquito-eating bats to get rid of the pests. Sadly, it didn't work and was destroyed later by Hurricane Irma. Number 72. The Florida Manatee Sanctuary Act of 1978 makes it illegal to disturb these teas in any way. Violators may face fines of up to $500 and be sentenced to up to 60 days in jail. Number 73. Manatees are also protected by the Federal Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972 and the Endangered Species Act of 1973. People convicted of violating the federal laws can be sentenced with a fine of $100,000 and a year in jail. Basically, leave manatees alone. Number 74. Florida also has its own Bigfoot called Skunk Ape. It's 8 foot tall, hairy, and sightings were so frequent in the 70s, they tried to make it a misdemeanor to take, possess, or harm anthropoid or humanoid animals. Number 75. Wildlife on Easy Street is a cat rescue service on the outskirts of Tampa that doubles up as one of the world's greatest B&Bs. In exchange for a $100 donation to the refuge, you can cuddle to your heart's content with the baby cat of your choice. Can't keep them though, which begs the question, what's the point? 
Number 76. Every year, Cape Coral hosts a burrowing owl festival to celebrate what the state calls a species of special concern. Burrowing owls are small, they're cute, and unlike most of their avian pals, they make nests in the ground. Oh, and Cape Coral, by the way, has more than any other city in the world. Number 77. Have you ever been called a short ass? Well, Florida has the record for the shortest ass in the world. After all, Knee High the Donkey was born in 2007 and is only 64 centimeters tall. Number 78. Speaking of records, St. Petersburg in Florida, which is not in Russia, which is a mistake that I genuinely made earlier on, currently holds the Guinness World Record for the most consecutive days of sunshine at 768 days. There's a reason it's called the Sunshine City and that Florida is called the Sunshine State. Number 79. And because it's the Sunshine State, it only makes sense that Miami Beach pharmacist Benjamin Green invented the first suntan cream back in 1944. He did this by cooking cocoa butter in a granite coffee pot on his stove. Brave of him, just randomly put it on his skin, but there we go. Number 80. The refrigerator was also invented in Florida, which again makes sense, it is hot there. Non-Floridian Oliver Evans may have designed the appliance, but the actual machine wasn't constructed until John Gorey, a doctor in Florida, made one in order to cool down his patients who suffered from yellow fever. I imagine they're a lot bigger to fit a person in. Number 81. Hopping back to Miami quickly, whilst it's very cool to own a beachfront property in the Magic City, according to a report in 2018, over 12,000 homes on the front are at risk of sinking underwater because of rapidly rising sea levels. Thanks, Greta. Number 82. Linda Duharm is a Florida resident who is unique in this world, probably in her marriage to Bruce. That's because Bruce is a ferris wheel. Looks like a good ride too. I'm just going to put it out there, gay marriage was still illegal when she married a literal metal fairground ride. That's all I'm going to say. Number 83. Another woman in Florida, Alexandria Wollaston, gave birth to two sets of twins in less than 12 months time. That's four babies delivered in a year. Apparently twins run in both sides of the family, so that can't have been that much of a shock, but still. Ow. Number 84. In 1998, a law was passed that required all daycare centres and preschools that were funded by the state to play classical music to the children. This was because Bill Turner, the state senator at the time, believed it would make them smarter. This has been disproved since, but the law is still in place. Number 85. Have you ever thought that a museum was all well and good and everything, but it just needed some more, you know, feces? Well, say hello to the online Pooseum, run by George Franson of Jacksonville, Florida. It contains over 1,200 ancient bits of poo. Don't stop believing, George. Number 86. About nine people are killed every year in Florida by lightning strikes, which is more than any other state by quite a margin. In fact, Florida used to be known as the lightning capital of the entire world, but then NASA discovered it was actually Rwanda. Not to do with Florida that, but still worth knowing. Number 87. Did you know that fireworks are actually illegal in Florida? Really? Yeah. They are allowed to be used for agricultural purposes to scare away birds from crops, which means that literally anyone can buy them as long as they sign a waiver. So Disney World might be scaring away some tweeting menaces every day. Number 88. Speaking of weird laws, it's also illegal for an unmarried woman to go skydiving on a Sunday, you can't take a pregnant pig to a Miami beach, and I'm not sure why this needs to be made law, surely it's common sense, but it's also illegal to have relations with a porcupine. Number 89. Back in 1994, when I was just a wean, one of the most ridiculous things I think we've ever discussed in a one-on-one video happened. No word of a lie, a 75-pound bag of cocaine fell out of a plane and fell straight into the middle of a crime watch meeting. You can't make it up. Number 90. Once a year, or annually as the experts say, Floridians yeet some dead fish right into Alabama. Why? I'm not sure, but these days it results in a huge big beach party, so any excuse. Number 91. On a similar theme, a Florida man tossed an alligator through a drive through window. He was charged with assault with a deadly weapon because, you know, that's fair enough, it's a frickin' alligator. Just stop throwing animals. Number 92. Dinosaur fans don't bother going to Florida. Back in dinosaur times, Florida wasn't even a landmass. It was underwater. So no one's ever found dinosaur fossils in the state at all. <laughs> Number 93. That being said, around 10 million years ago, the underwater fun land was absolutely packed full of sharks. So much so, in fact, that Venice Beach has been named the shark tooth capital of the world. Number 94. Alongside the shark teeth scattered along the coast, you might find some non-dino bones from creatures like short-faced bears, saber-toothed cats, and other Ice Age mammals. Mammals? Mammals. Number 95. Hey look, if bones don't do it for you, there's a lot of treasure to be found on Florida's coastlines. 
In 2015, one diver discovered $4.5 million worth of old gold coins. It's established that there could be trillions of dollars in the surrounding oceans. Number 96. The Jacksonville Football Stadium, called Everbank Field, is one of the largest and grandest stadiums in all of Florida. So big that it has its own marina. The rumour is that the marina exists in such close proximity because the owner of the stadium has a yacht he preferred to park nearby. <laughs> Number 97. Speaking of Jacksonville though, it was named after General Andrew Jackson, the first military governor of the state. What's weird though is that he never even visited this city that was named after him. Number 98. Just in case Florida wasn't the capital of enough things, Ybor City used to be known as the cigar capital of the world, with over 200 cigar making factories employing 12,000 tobacworos or cigar makers. At its peak, they used to produce around 700 million cigars every year. Number 99. You've heard of Minecraft, now get ready for Pinecraft. Pinecraft is a 3,000 strong Amish and Mennonite community in Sarasota, where people can actually go and stay for a taste of the Amish life, with Amish restaurants and shops. I hear the Wi Fi is not that great though. Ooh, yeah, it's number 100. Ooh, ooh yeah, ugh. Mm. Tampa Bay has the longest continuous stretch of sidewalk in the world. It's 4.5 miles long, and along the way, you might be able to see dolphins and porpoises in the bay, and the Gasparilla Pirate Ship, which happens to be the site of the annual Gasparilla Pirate Festival. It's number 101, isn't it? Yeah. Florida is a very unpredictable swing state when it comes to elections. The state's 27 electoral college votes have helped sway 12 out of the 14 past elections, so let's see how they swing it in 2020. So those were 101 Facts About Florida. Did you learn anything new? Are you from Florida? Let me know both of those things in the comments down below. Also let me know what you want to see next on 101 Facts, just so you know, it's nice to know what you think, isn't it? And while you're down there, give this video a like and subscribe because it really does help us out. And it helps you out because we provide you with lots of good fun content to fill your time with. For example, in the meantime, these two videos on screen are really going to prove that point. Yeah, I promise. Why not give it a click and uh, see if I'm right? And I'll see you there. Bye-bye now.